Here is a story with dialogue about a married woman who lost her job at an accounting firm due to lack of work, has debts, and her husband is unemployed. I can't believe they let me go after all those years of loyal service, she said wearily, sinking into the worn couch. Her husband looked up from his laptop with a pained expression. But how? The firm was doing so well, he said, furrowing his brow. What are we going to do about the mortgage, the car payments, utilities? Sarah. I know, I know. Believe me, I'm just as worried. They said it was just lack of work. A tough economy, I guess. But we've got to figure something out. She rubbed her temples, feeling the start of a tension headache brewing. The bills were already piling up. How would they manage with her income gone? He leaned back, running a hand through his thinning hair. Maybe I can pick up some freelance gigs, do some consulting work. It won't be much, but it's something. Every little bit helps, Sarah replied, trying to sound more hopeful than she felt. I'll start applying everywhere. The other firms, temp agencies, anything. Over the next few weeks, their routine became a flurry of internet job searches, networking calls, interviews that led nowhere. Rejections stacked up along with the unpaid bills. He cringed, opening yet another past due notice. Sarah, this is getting out of hand. We're months behind on everything. Sarah didn't respond sternly, just stared ahead, numb. Two months went by without any employment leads. Then the dreaded letter arrived. Notice of impending foreclosure and repossession if payments weren't made immediately. Sarah felt the last shred of hope wither. Two days later, her phone rang. It was James, her old manager from the accounting firm. Sarah, I know I had to let you go before, but I may have another opportunity for you now if you're interested. Sarah's heart raced. Yes, anything. Please, we're about to lose everything. James, her former manager, paused for a moment before continuing. Well, the job I have available isn't exactly in accounting. She didn't respond sternly, just waited with bated breath. They were out of options. James, it's more domestic work. You'd be hired as a maid for a wealthy client of mine. Your husband could also be brought on as a groundskeeper? Gardener. Sarah felt her stomach drop. This was not at all what she was expecting. B but I have years of professional experience. Surely there must be another position more suited to my skills? He gave her an apologetic look. I'm sorry, but this is the only opportunity I can offer right now. It would be live-in, room and board included. The pay is enough to help get you back on your feet. Her husband watched with knitted brows as she relayed James's proposition. Maid and groundskeeper? That's not what I imagined. Sarah. I know, but what other choice do we have? We're going to be homeless soon if we don't take any job we can get. He sighed heavily, running his fingers through his hair. You're right. Our professional pride has to take a backseat right now. We'll do whatever it takes. And so it was that a week later, they found themselves standing before a lavish estate, their meager belongings in two suitcases. James greeted them sternly. James, you'll be provided with housing in the staff quarters, meals in the kitchen when not serving the family. Your duties will be assigned each morning. Sarah felt a knot in her throat, but nodded. This was their new reality, at least for now. He gave her hand a reassuring squeeze as they entered their tiny quarters, a far cry from their former home. No matter what, we're in this together, Sarah. I know, just promise you won't let me lose myself in all this. I need to remember who I really am. He wrapped his arms around her tightly. You're the strongest person I know. This is temporary, I promise, we'll get through it. She nodded, steadying herself against the wave of humiliation they've had to endure. Just as she felt resolute, their employer's voice rang out. The employer. You there, the maid, come over here at once. Sarah felt her husband's comforting embrace loosen as she made her way over, dread mounting. Ye yes how can I be of service? The employer looked her up and down critically. Your appearance is simply unacceptable for my household staff. You must shave your head completely bald and change into these approved work clothes immediately. He shoved a bundle of drab, shapeless clothing and a razor into her hands. Sarah's eyes went wide with shock. Sarah. But sir, with all due respect, that seems an extreme request. Surely my hair pulled back neatly would suffice. The employer cut her off with a stern look. You will do as I say without argument if you wish to keep this implementation. 
My standards must be upheld. She looked back at her husband, who could only return a pained, apologetic glance. They had no leverage here. Sarah, understood. I'll take care of it right away. With shaky hands, she retreated to their tiny quarters, desperately trying to blink back tears. How much dignity must she forsake? He found her some time later, shorn head hung low, shapeless smock hanging limp. Oh, Sarah. He pulled her into a tight embrace. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I've never felt so small, so stripped of my identity. But I'll get through this for us. He stroked her shaved head gently. Your strength and beauty come from within where it really matters. Don't let them make you feel less than. She managed the barest smile at his reassurance. Drawing a fortifying breath, Sarah rejoined the household staff ready to resume her duties, head held high. Over the passing weeks, she worked tirelessly, scrubbing, mopping, serving meals with her new authorized uniform, all while studiously avoiding her own reflection. He could see the weariness and dejection etched on her face some evenings. I wish I could take this all away. Sarah didn't respond sternly, just offered him a wan smile as she readied for another grueling day of chores. He hated seeing that dimmed light in her eyes. As he was tending to the Immaculate Gardens later that morning, Sarah's employer's booming voice rang out. The employer. You there, the maid, get over here at once. Sarah hurried over, back rigid. Yes, sir. How may I serve you? The employer looked her up and down with disdain. Is that regrowth I see on your shorn head? Completely unacceptable. He grabbed a fistful of her quarter-inch hair stubs. Sarah winced but remained silent. The employer. You will commence shaving that bare pate of yours every single morning from now on before starting your duties. Am I making myself clear? Sarah. Y yes, sir, of course. It won't happen again. He watched the painful exchange from the gardens, hands clenching into bewildered fists. How much more indignity must his wife suffer? That evening as she peeled off her shapeless smock, her eyes were vacant, distant. He gathered her into a tight embrace. Sarah, my love, please. You don't deserve to be stripped of your humanity like this daily. Sarah. What choice is there? We have no other income, no prospects. This is our lot for now, however dehumanizing. Her fingers gingerly traced her hairless scalp, eyes glistening. At least it's just hair. It will grow back, eventually. He pressed his lips to her forehead firmly. Your strength, your radiant spirit, those can never be shorn, no matter what mundane humiliations are demanded of you. Sarah managed the faintest of smiles then. Keep reminding me of that. Some days I feel I'm losing myself entirely. The next morning, she resignedly dragged the razor across her head once more before reporting for duty. But her shoulders were squarer, chin raised ever so slightly. He watched her go with a mixture of pride and heartache, his brave, indomitable wife, reduced to this harsh stripping of dignity. But he vowed to keep reminding her of her worth. Sarah. Good morning. I'm ready for my assignments today. Her tone was polite yet tinged with an undercurrent of resilience, of self-preservation. The small act of resistance buoyed him. As the sun set, she emerged from the estate, head stubbly once more. But her eyes held that familiar spark.